Hi, I'm John Messer. I'm the uh, Regional Executive of the Great Lakes Regional Synod, and I'm the Leadership Development Catalyst for Luminex. And today I'm going to share with you part four of our systems thinking series. And we're at the point now of determining what's really going on in our church system. Last time we talked about identifying variables and uh, starting to think about whether they're symptoms or core problems. And I said that they provide the basis for a fuller understanding, a, a, another tool that will give us a deeper understanding of what's really going on. And that tool is called a causal loop diagram. And it's called a causal loop because it is a loop that is representing causal relationships. And so if you'll recall, we worked with three variables the people's dissatisfaction as Moses was doing his ministry and their dissatisfaction was primarily that they had to wait all day for him to do his adjudication ministry and the relationship of that dissatisfaction that it had on his ministry effort or his ministry time and that was a positive relationship as their dissatisfaction increased Moses ministry time or his ministry effort increased that's a positive relationship that's why we have a plus sign here representing that relationship that's positive and so as his ministry effort and his ministry time went up, that would decrease the dissatisfaction. And so that's a negative relationship. And so that's why we have a minus sign here showing that's an inverse relationship. And when you have one link, this is called the link, the variable and the link between the variables. When you have one positive and one negative, that creates a balancing loop. In other words, it's not going to go on forever because as Moses increases his ministry time, that dissatisfaction is going down. However, as more people come to Moses, that dissatisfaction continues to increase. And there's another thing that's happening when Moses is doing this ministry. And this is the part that we tend to miss. As, ministry, as Moses' ministry effort goes up, we also see that his workload stress and his anxiety is going up. The reason that Moses probably didn't recognize this, and Jethro did, is that Jethro was looking on this as an outsider who wasn't wrapped up in the system, so he could see more objectively. But Jethro recognized that his stress and anxiety level was going up. Moses did not recognize that. He was just doing ministry like so many good pastors do. They're just doing what they need to do to get the ministry done. They keep going and going, and they, they give more hours and do more. But what happens is that increases stress. And the reason we tend not to recognize that is that there's another component called a delay. A delay is any amount of time, either in, in time or space, that separates the, the action from the consequences. And so as uh, Moses increases his ministry time, that eventually works itself out in increased anxiety and stress that may not be immediately apparent, and that's why we tend to miss it. We don't tend to realize that consequences of our actions are not always immediate. They're not always immediately close, and they're not always immediate in time. A lot of times we do things, make choices, uh, choose courses of action that have consequences that don't appear until later. That's what a delay is. So the delay between Moses' increased effort in ministry and recognizing that his stress level is so high, that there's a delay there. It takes time for that to happen. But as that happens, that also increases the dissatisfaction with the people because it impacts his ability to handle that ministry in a healthy and functional way. So what we have here actually is the causal loop diagram for ministry burnout. This is how it happens. And what Jethro told Moses was basically, hey, Moses, what you're doing is not good. And, what, and the reason it's not good is because this is what's happening. You're doing more ministry to try to meet the need, but in doing that, you're increasing stress and anxiety to the point where you're going to burn out. You can't do it. It's not good. You can't do this all on your own. And that, of course, is why Jethro says you need to appoint, uh, you need to appoint elders over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. Delegation is not the only lesson in that passage. This passage is very much about systems thinking in Scripture and how we ministers can avoid ministry burnout. 
So I want you to hear this lesson. Number one, ministry burnout is real. It's a biblical concept. And number two, you don't have to go there. Jethro told Moses how to get out of it. And we can get out of this cycle, this ministry burnout cycle, by intervening in the system. And there will be more information available for you on a handout uh, that will be available on the website. So please look for that. But before I go, I just want to let you know that what we're finding in a causal loop diagram is we're finding cause and effect. We're finding cause and effect. <clears throat> and the real cause, the real cause of ministry burnout is not the dissatisfaction of the people. It's not the workload, stress and anxiety. The real cause of ministry burnout is here. It's the response of the minister or the church leader to the situation, thinking that the only possible thing is that I have to do more, try harder, be better. That is not the only way of dealing with a systemic problem. And so in our next session, we're going to talk about the ways we think from a systems perspective that will help us avoid the, the either or, there's only one way to solve this problem, the quick fix thinking. So ministry burnout is real. Systems thinking is a biblical concept and look for the handout. And I'll see you next time for the last in our series on systems thinking for church leaders. Thank you.